that have to do with the EU itself and the European Union member states. What's up, guys? Hopefully the black screen is gone. <clears throat> yeah, what if the turkeys ate us? What if they filleted us? What's up? All right, let's see how long it takes the, for everybody to get the alert today. You never know what's going to happen. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Hope you guys got the uh, turkey, uh, the new turkey, the Turkey Club t-shirts are out. Turkey Club t-shirts, Turkey Club sweatshirts, Turkey Club iPhone cases, Turkey Club Android cases, Turkey Club fucking everything. It's all available on uh, Teespring, my Teespring site. Uh, so hope you guys uh, thought that was cool. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty fired up by it. I want to remind everybody to make sure you guys subscribe to my other channel, Corrupted Nation, if you guys, because um, some of these live streams I do from over there, because I don't like doing a lot of live stream stuff and non-wrestling stuff on this channel. I like to keep this channel wrestling. So um, for all the people into the non-wrestling stuff, I just uh, remind you to go over to Corrupted Nation and check out that, that channel. Hopefully um, you guys enjoyed the uh, AEW review last night the hell is this? I'm looking at my mail that I've been getting and I'm like, what, what is all this mail? Um, I don't know what that is. That's garbage. Um, this is garbage, it looks like. Collector's office, that's never good. Um, that's weird, I got a nice message from my aunt. Collector's office, that's never good. Collector's office, again, that's never good. A lot of collector's office stuff. What's up, everybody? Uh, hopefully you guys are getting the alert. Sounds like it didn't go out to a lot of people, so uh, hopefully eventually we'll get out there to everybody. What's going on, everybody? The turkey shirt is dope. Shit, that's awesome. Let me know what you guys think about that turkey club t-shirt. Um, and let me know what you think about it. Dave Rose is listening. I think we're going to be able to get that shit recorded in a couple hours, man. If you're around, just hit me up. Uh, I'll be around today, man. Rose Montana. What's up, Rose? What's going on, everybody? Am I not live? What's going on here? Am I not live? What's up? The fuck? Am I live now? Am I still live? Oh man. Me, you, and Sean's View in a podcast in person. I would definitely do that. It sounds like you know where uh, Sean's View lives. I don't even know where Sean's... I don't know his house. I don't know where he lives. I had his phone number and uh, I lost it and I've been hitting him up uh, to, to be on the... to do the show with him and he just doesn't respond to me on Twitter. I don't know what the hell Sean's view is doing. Joe, you make a tank top for the turkey t-shirt? I can, yeah, I didn't do that, but I, I could add, I think I can add that. What up, Steve Kalan? What's up, man? Yeah, hit that like button. Hit that like button, baby. How's the stream going? It's taking a while to get out to everybody. So hopefully everybody will get there. I just put up a episode of Morning Madness. So Morning Madness is up. I answered all the questions that you guys asked on Patreon. Uh, and then I talked about a couple little things going on and all kinds of other bullshit. So episode 193 of Morning Madness is up. And uh, pretty soon when episode 200 of Morning Madness happens on Patreon, uh, the, the name of the show is going to change to just Madness. So it's just going to change to Madness, Joe Cronin Madness Podcast, the Madness Podcast, the Madness Podcast. Morning will leave that because it's never morning, it's always morning, afternoon, nighttime, you never know what the fuck. Oh, that'd be sick if there was a man's bra, that'd be that'd be kind of nice, wouldn't it? I'd be down with that, with that. Um, 
E all the donation alerts are on. They should be working. So if anybody does that, uh, membership should still work too. If anybody becomes a member now or any does anything, I think all the alerts are working. Uh, Jason, what's up, Joe? Uh, this is tomorrow. What the hell? What's up? Thank you to. Uh, oh God, I forgot the people I was going to shout out. Now I shouted you guys out on Morning Madness, and I'll be shouting you out tonight and all week. But there's a couple of people I did want to shout out. Now I can't quite uh, put my finger on it. But uh, I don't know. I got to shout out Scott McKinnon. He became a twenty-five dollar producer. <laughs> He's been a good guy recently. He's toned it down, so if he keeps toning it down, he's been really cool uh, recently, you know what I mean? So I'm just trying to be friends with everybody uh, I can that's not a dick. Uh, give everybody a, th a second, third, fourth chance or whatever, so it's all good, whatever. He's been pretty good, so it's all good, except for the time he called and said all the N-words a bunch, but uh, either way. Uh, thank you to everybody else who has become a $25 patron. We're going to be shouting you out tonight and throughout the week. The producer level shits off the off the chart right now. But really, the Turkey Club t-shirt is out. I am. This is my last attempt ever at pushing a t-shirt. Um, you know, other t-shirts uh, typically sell. We sell 15 or 10 or 15 of t-shirts, and it never seems worth it. Um, to really ma to really matter, it's got to sell about 50. You got to sell about 50 of them. So um, the the sweatshirts are available, the t-shirts are available, all the iPhone and Android cases are available, the mug, the coffee mug, it's all available right now on Teespring. I put up a post about it, I put it on Twitter, all that stuff. If you search Joe Cronin Show Teespring, you'll find all the t-shirts. I have hundreds of shit, it's, it's crazy. You can still even buy the old corrupted shirts, you can buy the old JCS Army, you can buy the old whatever the fuck, you can buy everything. Uh, so much shit on there. So make it a holiday event and buy a bunch of t-shirts. There's still one t-shirt I have on Pro Wrestling Tees. So you can still actually go over there and buy one t-shirt. But I recommend going to my Teespring site. The Turkey Club shirt is up now. So Out of Nowhere is tonight. So we'll be pushing the Turkey Club t-shirt heavily on Out of Nowhere. And uh, yeah, if this one doesn't do, do well, this will be uh, the last one that I ever make. Man, I'm starting to look old right now. I just noticed I'm looking at myself. It's like I aged like five years in the last week. You can tell my, my face, I need some water. Um, if we buy a Turkey Club shirt tomorrow, will we have them in time for Thanksgiving? I don't think so. I, I think I fucked up on that. So unfortunately, the Thanksgiving thing, I don't know. You can do rush shipping. My experience with Teespring is you get it in five to ten days. That's been my experience on Teespring. So, that's what I think. Jim Ross replied to the tweet. Oh, yeah, to that Mongoloids tweet. Yeah, he was like, give me a break, dude, or whatever. Yeah, I saw that last night. Maybe the pressure of running a, f a family is getting to you. Yeah. The pressure of, of uh, running a family, a household, payments. Super chat. Super chat. Smoking a bowl for my 42nd birthday. Whoa. Too sweet. Too sweet. Boom. Happy 42, man. That's crazy. You're in your 40s now. Now it's now it's all going to hell. Uh, but yeah, man. Happy birthday and happy 42. And um, speaking of that, I'm I'm so looking forward to the Picard series, man. I hope the Star Trek Picard is good. I really, really hope it's good. Really hope it's good. Hopefully, I did. Either people aren't getting the alerts. You know, I don't know what the hell is going on. Uh, Jabroni Jarrett Podcast, come on bud, Cronin don't know he's a Boston fan, but how do you feel about Sheldon Keefe? What the fuck, Beersy, what are you talking about? Um, life begins at 40, they say. Um, doctor's visits begin at 40 is what they should say. Once you turn 30, that's when you want to start thinking about doctors. And, and go figure, I'm 35 and now I have no health insurance, so it's kind of funny could use it right now 40 is the new 30 but they're saying that we're dying younger the millennials are dying younger uh, than ever so I don't know no alerts just happened to open YouTube Monday Nitro says of course of course there's no alert for this fucking thing 
Um, Leafs just fired their coach. Oh, really? I didn't see that. Okay, cool. I get it. Wow, I didn't know what was going on. Crystal Emerson, I'm 44, so it's downhill. I'll let you know that. Yeah. I can tell you now because, I mean, once I turned 30, I started gaining weight. I never gained weight before. So, I mean, I can tell you. Like, it's definitely happening. I can't wait to open these letters from the collector's office. I can't wait to see how exciting <laughs> how exciting these are going to be. <laughs> um, i got to be honest with you, Joe. I've always wanted to get into Star Trek. What should I start with? Hunter Dvorak. What's up, man? Um... So, the original Star Trek, obviously, with Kurt, Kirk and Spock and all that stuff way back in the 70s. Um, you know, if you watch some of those episodes, they're really dated. You know, it's really like monster movie, sci-fi, like old school shit. Um, but what I would do is maybe... Maybe watch, maybe watch an episode of every, every, every Star Trek and see what you like the best. Maybe that. That's a good recommendation. I've never done that before. What got me into Star Trek was Star Trek The Next Generation with Picard, you know, Patrick Stewart, and, and you know, Riker, and Data, and Troy, and Beverly, and all those characters from the TNG. I mean, I grew up watching that with my dad. So when I would go back and watch the old original Star Trek, I thought it was dated and goofy. Um... So I just kept watching The Next Generation, and I just grew up loving that, watching that all the way through. But eventually, I went back and watched the old stuff, and then Deep Space Nine came out, and then I liked that, and then I really liked Voyager, and then I liked Enterprise. I didn't watch Enterprise for the first couple of seasons uh, in 2000, and I thought it was dumb. I thought the opening was horrible, like the song was weird, like it was, and then eventually I watched it, and I liked it. Now it's like one of my favorite ones, which is strange, but... uh yeah, so I don't know. Maybe watch all of them like, and see which one doesn't piss you off, I guess. I don't know. Depends what type of stuff you like. What's the episode... Uh, what's the episode of the original series of Star Trek where um, where they go through the, the time travel device? City on the Edge of Forever or something like that? Is that the name of this, the episode? I can't remember. But uh, yeah, that that's a great episode. That's an episode that you could start with. It's not like a goofy monster suit, you know, that type of thing. It's actually kind of good. I think it's City on the Edge of Forever. Um, I'd watch that episode, and then um, I'd watch, like, The Next Generation, like... The first two seasons of The Next Generation are kind of sci-fi and weirder, and then after that, the characters get really good, um, so that show just gets better. Um... But you can watch almost any episode, I guess. Uh, depends what you like. If you watch the first season of The Next Generation, it's very more, like, sci-fi-y. Like, you know what I mean? If you watch, like, the the fifth or the seventh season, it, it's way different. It's, like, so different. It's unbelievable. Uh, the writing is gets way better. But the sci-fi kind of goes away. But then they mix the sci-fi and the writing. It's, it's really one of the best shows, I think. I, I just love it, man. I just love... Star Trek, I don't know, but, um, you know, it's not like Star Wars, Star Wars is more like action, lightsaber battles and stuff, Star Trek is more like original Star Trek, all the original Star Treks are more about sort of, um, strategy and science and the human element and things like that, how we progressed as humans and stuff like that. It's it's a whole different thing. It's way more serious and slow moving than uh something like Star Wars. Star Wars is more like fantasy action sci fi. Star Trek is more like science fiction drama um I guess, I don't know, adventure. Um, yeah, but Star Trek is supposed to be like, what really could happen in the future? You know, Star Wars is kind of more like this fantasy of stuff. I, it's kind of like NFL Blitz versus, versus Madden, you know? Star Wars is like NFL Blitz. Like, it's ridiculous. That wouldn't really happen, it seems like. But it's exciting to a lot of people. Uh, Madden is more like a simulation of actual football, trying to keep it within the realm of what it really is. So Star Trek is like that, and 
Star Wars is like an NFL blitz, you know? So, Star Wars movies, Star Wars movies, the original ones, are probably better than any Star Trek movies. Uh, Star Trek's TV shows are great. Um, so, Star Trek TV shows are great. Star Wars movies are better as movies. But I like, uh, I like Star Trek movies, but, you know. Anyway. Now everybody's gonna get timed out for saying Blitz in the chat. My bad. So again, the Turkey Club t-shirts are out. Everybody go buy them up, and, uh, we'll find out. I'm gonna call everybody's bluff. Everybody said, make a t-shirt, make a Turkey Club, ah. We're gonna call everybody's bluff if nobody buys them. And I'm never gonna make another t-shirt again, I'll tell you that. Eight t-shirt sales is like $15. That's not going to do it. I could come on here and pour this coffee all over my privates. Uh, Star Wars is like NFL Extreme and Star Trek is like Madden. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, sure. Either way. Nightbot is threatening you. Yeah, Nightbot sucks sometimes. Sometimes Nightbot is a cunt. Tonight is out of nowhere. Um, tomorrow night is monetized this. Saturday night is the NXT review and then Corrupted Podcast. If you did not hear Corrupted Podcast last Saturday on Patreon, it is fucking like three and a half hours long. And I thought it was a really damn good show. And people are telling me that too. So I'm like, cool. All right. It was good. So that is something you need to listen to. I put up a clip of it on Corrupted Nation. Uh, but it's like three and a half hours of that shit, so. Where the weed at? Well, I definitely won't smoke it in the car, because Leah will have a freak out, even though she smokes cigarettes everywhere and everything smells like shit cigarettes, but I guess it's okay to smell like shit cigarettes, but if you smell like weed, you know, that's the problem. But I don't want to smoke weed in the car where the kids come in and everything, you know. I don't like that Leah smokes cigarettes in the car, you know. I wish nobody would smoke in the car, that'd be good. Uh, Rab, what up, Rab? The title is not on the line tomorrow. Uh, we're still about a week and a half to two weeks away from that title defense. Trust me, when it when when the monetize this belt is on the line in a couple weeks, I will be fucking promoting the shit out of that. It'll be one of the biggest events ever. Um, yeah, weed's pretty popular here. I mean, considering it's legal now, yeah, it's it's totally legal to smoke weed here. So, yeah, it's definitely popular. And uh, they just opened up a weed dispensary right up the street for me so now i can just drive around the corner and what's up pretty fucking crazy yeah women are always right that's what you got to remember you got to remember that you can't be thinking about double standards with women and wives you just got to be like yo i'm an idiot you're right does this necklace ever leave my neck no i've never take i don't think i've taken this off since the day i put it on and that's 100 percent truth dead on truth why don't I start wrestling again? Um, cause I might get injured now. I, now I could never wrestle. I cannot wrestle now because if I got hurt, I have no health insurance. So I definitely cannot wrestle again. I won't even go up to grim. That's why I told everybody that that whole thing was kayfabe with me and him. Like we were never mad at each other. We were just fighting online cause we saw the Seth Rollins thing. We took the opportunity and uh, none of that was real, so. But we had his fans hating me, man. They were pissed. They were, like, really mad at me, and I was really going at them. Uh, my, my ankle is still a little bit messed up, yeah, but I don't care. I could wrap it and play, so it's it's been over a year now, so it should be something. It's crazy to think that it was over a year ago I heard it, and it's still lumpy right now when I look at it. But, yeah, I don't have uh, health insurance, so uh, we're not going to do anything. It's either $1,800 a month or $1,500 a month or it's uh, whatever the bills are. So, Do you like your beard, Joe? No, I don't like any. No, I don't. I hate it. I stopped watching after all the stupid wife stuff. Yeah, that was weird. I can't believe that he, that, that happened with his wife. I still, I'm still shocked about what happened. I can't believe that. I thought they, like, loved each other and shit. I, I'm so fucking confused over that. Like, I saw them together and was like, they love each other, the family and the kids. Like, it's so great. 
and find out it's not. It's fucking crazy. Fuck. People in Jersey are never happy. Uh, it's not an act. I wish it... I mean, I thought I thought it was an act. It's... I guess it's not an act. It's crazy. I thought it was an act. But yeah, I'm really um, here to promote that Turkey Club t-shirt that's up now. The sweatshirt, the t-shirt, the phone cases, the mug... There's a bunch of shit. Women's t-shirts, man's t-shirts. You can even get one for your wife and tell her who knows what the fuck it means. I don't know. Uh, but it's up now on uh, Teespring. Drama equals money. It's real, though. The drama's real. Like, it's not even fucking a joke. It's crazy. I thought it was drama, too. But they used a real-life situation, apparently. Unless uh, Grimm's wife lets him uh, hook up with other chicks. I don't know. What the fuck, you know. Uh, Joe, why Lugi doesn't watch AEW? Because she's a cunt fucking big nose Italian bimbo who gets paid by the WWE to uh, pretend like she likes the company. That's why. Thank God she doesn't watch it, though. That'd be annoying as shit. Are you even obsessed with being over clean, Joe, as an adult? Here we go, I'm about yes. to get it, man. Here we go, here about to get it, man. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Oh, 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 no. Shy God. Best Dunkin' Donut. Best Dunkin' Donuts? I mean, Dunkin' Donuts is the best. I agree with that, Shy God. What up, Shy God? I heard you were getting the Turkey Club t-shirt that's now available on my Teespring's uh, t-shirt site. Thank you, Shy God, for saying that. Sorry, I put it up on Twitter, and I think I saw you say something about it. Um, what what do you like from Dunkin' Donuts? Um, Shy God, ninety seven. I like the coffee. I guess. I mean, coffee and donuts. I mean, I don't know. Coffee and donuts, and I like those. Um, I like those breakfast uh, wraps too. I get those a lot too. Uh, do I care about the impeachment? Not really. I haven't been watching it. Leah does, though. Leah really cares. We've re we've only gotten in about nine fights. Because, like, I haven't been paying attention to it just because I'm just not... Like, I I'm like, boy, you cried wolf at this point about Trump. Even if he did do something at this point, I'm just so, like, I don't care anymore. I, I hear it every week. If you hear that a guy's done something every week for three years, then when they actually do an impeachment on something different, you know, you just kind of are, like, numb to it. So I'm just numb to it. I just don't care. I mean, you, I don't know what to tell you. It sounds like he did some stuff, and it's true, but it's nothing that some other the pres other presidents didn't do, but now we're having a big trial for him. It's, like, weird. It's just, like, why didn't we have a trial for Bush or, or uh, fucking Obama? Like, the drone strikes that Obama did, the illegal stuff that George Bush did, the war crimes that George Bush committed... Never, ever had a meeting about those. Uh, so it's just weird. But, um, yeah, so I haven't been watching. I mean, I don't know. I'm a big Tulsi Gabbard fan, though. She beat the shit out of some midget guy the other day on the Democratic debates. And Tulsi Gabbard shit on this guy. This guy, did you guys see the clip of this? This guy legitimately, she goes, he supports us sending troops to Mexico to work with the Mexicans um, to, in Mexico to fight the cartels. She's like, I am not for that. Like, we're not sending our troops to Mexico now. Like, I, I want to bring all our troops home. That's what Tulsi Gabbard says. And she goes, this guy wants to send troops there. Then the guy goes, oh, that's absolutely ridiculous that you would say that. No one here, I don't think anyone here would ever think that we would send troops to invade Mexico. And it was like, she didn't say anything about invading Mexico, you fucking idiot. She said, sending troops there to fight the cartels. 
And this guy just jumped to like, she said invading Mexico. Like, I, I was like, what the fuck? Is this guy stupid or deaf or completely retarded? So like, you, you got to go look at the clip. This guy literally just makes up that she said invaded out of nowhere. Like it was the weirdest fucking thing. She calls him out on what he said. He could have just said, yeah, I wanted to help Mexico. The cartels are out of control. Our, our military is the only people that could help. And um, I think a lot of people would agree with that. Instead, instead he goes, oh, I never said that we should invade them. I, Tulsi never said that you said they should invade them, you fucking idiot. So, like, I just love Tulsi more and more. The, the Democrats are psychos on stage, man. I, fucking Elizabeth Warren or whatever is out of her mind. Uh, Biden is wants to touch a kid. Like, it's just so weird, bro. It's weird. Oh, turkey on Thanksgiving. Fuck ham. Fuck that. Ham gives me heartburn. I like I like ham. You know, ham's all right. I like ham, uh, but no, I want turkey on Thanksgiving. But Joe, why does JD complain about Lugie when he complains about everything? Or why does why JD doesn't complain? I don't fucking know. Who gives a fuck? Why is he five foot six and fucking annoying? I don't know. Um, I don't know, man. Fox annoys me. CM Punk annoys me. WWE annoys me at this point. I don't give a shit. I think CM Punk wasted a return by sitting at Fox talking shit when he could have just created his own podcast to do this. Um, but instead he goes on Fox and says all this shit. I don't know, man. Fuck the fuck CM Punk. Fuck Fox. Fuck the WWE. Fuck everybody. Show you need someone to design better merch. Um, I just had someone design it. It's a whole. It's a brand new designer. The 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 Turkey Club T-shirt is uh, designed by somebody that's never ever designed any of my T-shirts before. And uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a brand new design. And it cost me money, too, so... If this doesn't work, fuck it. If this works, I might look at some designers for future ones, but... At this point, we have to sell... Uh, we have to sell at least 15 t-shirts to pay for the design, so... We're gonna find out if this was worth a shit. If you had a choice, get taller or bigger dick? Hmm... I don't know. That's a tough one. I'd probably go get taller at this point because it seems that Leah's happy. So, uh, isn't the donation money enough uh, from Raw enough to pay him? Yeah, it is. I paid him. I paid him already. That's why I did it. The donation money from Raw allowed me to buy the T-shirt design. Uh, but if the T-shirts but if the t-shirts only make $19, what the fuck, you know, it's, why would I, in the future, I'm not going to do that. Why would you do that? Why would you spend, uh, 50 bucks for a logo design and then sell eight t-shirts and then you're in the negative? Why would you keep doing that? You know, that doesn't make any sense. Um, but a lot of people said they wanted the turkey club. So lots of turkey club, t-shirts, sweatshirts, everything. It took me an hour to get all the shit up. It's up there. Patriots are not losing to the Cowboys. I wouldn't think so. I think the Patriots barely, you know, just beat the Eagles. The Patriots' defense shit on the Eagles. Um, so I, I I expect the Patriots' defense to shit on the Cowboys, too. Um, it's really going to come down to can the Patriots' fucking offense score some points. That's what it's going to come down to. But I don't think the Cowboys' defense is as good as the Eagles' defense. So I think the Patriots' offense is going to score a little bit better than they did on the Eagles, on the Cowboys, and I think the Patriots' defense is going to do even better on the Cowboys than they did on the Eagles. So I'm not worried about the Cowboys. Uh, the Ravens are the team that the Patriots need to prove they can beat because the Ravens have a solid defense and a solid offensive attack, a bursting just... Like, they have a weird team, man. The Ravens have a weird kind of sort of... 
sneaky, gritty, grindy juggernaut of a team. And that is a team to be worried about. Um, if the Patriots weren't involved in anything, it would be probably Kansas and the Ravens. And I'd pick the Ravens to beat Kansas at this point. I might pick the Ravens to... I mean, the Ravens and Patriots is going to be really close. It's going to be very close. When the Patriots get to the end of the season and they're playing their top level, um, it's... I think they'll play the Ravens tougher than they did the last time, but it's going to be it's going to be a tough game. It seems like the Ravens uh, are a bad matchup for the Patriots too. So the Patriots would probably be lucky if maybe the Ravens could have a bad game in the playoffs against somebody else and could get eliminated. So that would be the best case scenario is if the Ravens had a bad game and got eliminated by somebody on a freak bullshit and they got taken out. That would be the best case scenario for Patriots because they seem to not match up very well with the Ravens, but uh, Patriots are all about adjustments, and they'll make a big adjustment, so the next time they play the Ravens, um, it's not often that the Patriots lose twice in a row to a team in the same year, like they get beat in the season, then they get beat in the playoffs, that's really, I don't know what the stats are on that, but it's like insanely rare, so if the Ravens can do that, that'll be massively impressive, insanely impressive, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, Patriots can beat the Chiefs if they make it. Patriots are going to have to prove they can beat the Ravens, though. That's uh, that's going to be a tough one. The Patriots need their O-line to get better, and the Patriots need to get receivers on the same page they were on at the beginning of the season when they played the Pittsburgh Steelers, and, and the Patriots just looked insane. Brady was throwing balls to everybody, and Brady was connecting. Brady was throwing crazy passes, accurate passes, deadly passes. Brady was on fire that first game of the season. And then ever since then, he's been good, bad, okay, bad. Like, he's been all over the place. So, And that's and the reason for that is the O-line getting blitzed and the uh, receivers going down. And, he, and he's just he can't get rid of the ball fast enough. And when he has to get rid of the ball fast, it's... Nobody's open. You know, the Eagles and the Ravens really covered people really well. Um, Joe, would you want the Ravens versus 49ers in the Super Bowl? Yeah, I could see that happening. I really think that that's a very highly likely. That's in my top three, like, Super Bowl outcomes, I think, is Ravens and 49ers. Probably Ravens 49ers, Pats 49ers. Uh, maybe the Seahawks could get in too. The Seahawks could find a way potentially. Uh, Rams could have not. I'm not really in on the Rams anymore. I feel like they got a tougher time now, but kind of out on them now. Um, Saints. Saints are still a possibility. Um, that's basically it. Patriots, Kansas, Ravens. Um, Saints, Seahawks, 49ers. I saw Antonio Brown run an apology to Kraft. Antonio Brown run an apology to Kraft and the Patriots, so that was cool of him. Um, I think the Patriots want to get him back. I honestly believe it. It's like all that shit happened right as the Patriots got him, and then as soon as they got him, it was like, oh, sex scandal, this scandal, that thing, and then they, they fired him, and... And then after that, nothing happened to the guy. It was like all the news on Antonio Brown went completely away. So I almost wonder if the Patriots just bring him back. Like, fuck it. Like, all this was bullshit. Bring him back. He's clearly a scumbag, kind of, though. But why would he write that apology? I don't know. He's kind of in the same situation as uh, that Miles guy or whatever. Uh, not Miles. Uh, whatever the guy is from NXT. Except that guy didn't write an apology. And he's fired and can't work anywhere for a year. I won't hate Brady if he leaves. No matter what Brady does, only this guy was our quarterback for 20 years. I'm not going to hate him. It's not going to be a Brett Favre thing. It's if, if if Brady went to the Jets, I would hate him. That's about it. If Brady went to the Jets, I would kill somebody. Uh, but that's about it. I don't care where he goes. Like he, If he goes somewhere else, I hope whatever. I just hope he's good. I, I like him. I'm, just not, I'm never going to not like that guy for what he did, you know? Cowboys are upsetting the Patriots, calling it now. It could happen. Who's going to win tonight, the Colts or the Texans? Um, 
That's a that's a tough that's a tough one. The Texans have been really good at times this year, but not solid. The Colts have been just all over the place. I'm gonna ha- I think I'm gonna pick the Texans, man. I, I think I'm gonna pick the Texans. To be honest, uh, that's a tough one. That's gonna be a tough game to predict. I don't know, man. I think it's like probably looking at like 24 to 21 or some shit. I don't know. Who knows? I'm going Texans, but it's a flip. It's a flip of the coin. Depends on what Colts team comes out. You know what I mean? The Colts, the Colts come out and shit themselves. Uh, the Colts could come out and be the best they are. The Colts at the very best. I think if the Colts are playing at their very best of the season, they can beat the Texans. Um, but I think the Texans at, at mediocre to their best can beat any other version of that Colts team. You know what I'm saying? So if the Colts are playing their absolute best, they can beat the Texans. But if the Texans are playing at their top level and the Colts give anything less than their best of the season, then the Colts will lose. So it's really going to come down to that. Watch the game and see how that develops. But yeah, if the Colts come out and they just do everything perfect and they play their best, they can beat the Texans. It's not like a game where you're like, no matter what, they're not going to beat them. It's not going to happen. So I'm going Texans... uh, 65% 65% Texans over the Colts. But uh, the Colts could win, so it's a fucking toss-up. You tell me uh, Texans and Dolphins, I'm picking Texans. You tell me Texans and uh, Panthers, I'm picking Texans. You tell me Texans and uh, Chargers, I'm going Texans. You know, But you tell me Texans and Colts, well, that's a closer one to me, but... Again, I'm going to go Texans based on the Colts. But the Colts have been wishy-washy. Not bad, though, for the Colts this year for after losing their quarterback out of nowhere. I think Lamar Jackson is going to get MVP. I thought he was going to be a bust, too. But, yeah, I think he could get MVP this year, yeah. Otto Von Eichmann the third. Uh, why did Jews do 9-11? I don't know. We don't know that. Uh, they might have, or it's not really them. It's just rich people. But I know that's like the same thing to you. So like I don't know, but I, I don't know. Uh, who knows who did it? Who knows who did it? Cheney and Bush had something to do with it. It seems like, and they uh, they're Christians, aren't they? Uh, all right. Well, I think we're getting ready to wrap it up in a few minutes. So I got another five minutes with you, or whatever. Um, I don't know where is it. Eleven p.m. as always tonight. Uh, the Turkey Club t-shirts are up, guys. I hope you guys go buy them and check them out. There's so much available. T-shirts, sweatshirts, all that shit. Um, a job is a job. Doesn't matter what it is, Costanza. Well, yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, I don't know. I promised my daughter I'd push her on the swings. So I'm gonna push her on the swings, and I gotta go get her a little. Uh, I gotta get her a little uh, game because at school the kids are all supposed to bring in a board game. So, and I'm gonna watch NXT. I gotta watch all of NXT. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm gonna go watch NXT, and then I'm going to try to get all that done and contact Dave Rose and see if we can get our podcast on Epstein done, and then um, we'll see. Epic rap battles. Yeah, I watch some of those sometimes. JB. Speaking of uh, of JB, man, he's killing it, bro. JB is killing it. I got the beer ready for the 15-hour stream. Hell yeah, baby. And people called JB a fifth mic, huh? They called this motherfucker a fifth mic. JB ain't no fifth mic, man. He's getting some of the most views ever. JB's killing it in his toilet. That's right, man. JB is the uh, second most watched uh, show ever in the community. JB is killing it. He ain't no bitch. He ain't no fifth mic. He ain't no fucking puppet. He's a fucking his own man, and he's killing it. That's who JB is. That's who fucking JB is, motherfucker. One of the funniest bastards on this show since 2015. That's who JB is. And I know that pisses people off, but JB is uh, my guy. Go check out Monetize This Episode 59 if you want to relive some fun uh, 
with me and JB and Jesse starting that show off. People were sending that to me the other day, and I was like, yeah, god damn, I love that fucking episode. Episode 59 of Monetize This, it starts with like a, whoa, what are they talking about? And then you understand what we're talking about, and it's a cliffhanger. It's a lot of fun. Um, what up, old man Davey? Thanks for the heart, old man Davey. And hey, old man Davey, Scott McKinnon's a twenty-five dollar producer now. What do you think about that? It's fucked up. A lot of people have been watching for a long time, no doubt. Thank you for that. By the way, hit that like button. Let's make sure we get sixty-nine likes. I don't know how many likes we have, but. I will be really sad and depressed if I see less than 69 likes. I mean, 69 is a perfect number, but 100 is an even better number. Since 13,000 subs, yeah, that was a while back. I think that was about when I met JD. I saw Shoe Nice on H3H3, H3, yeah, that was funny. I sent Ethan a message, too, the other day, and I think he responded. I got to go check it out, what he said, um, but fuck him. And Boogie, too. I talked to Boogie. I want to get Boogie uh, to come on the show this week. Uh, did you watch? You know, yeah, I watched. I watched. It's kind of funny. He's a psycho, dude. He's a fucking discombobulated mess. It was actually kind of annoying, to be honest. Like, it was just annoying. Because he's so fucking stupid and crazy. All that shit he's drank and eaten and fuck. And he's, he's all fucked up. Um, so. What's up, Josh? What's up, Jim K's? I don't know. I couldn't stand it, man. I just I was looking at Ethan too. He looked like he wanted to kill himself. He was like, "Oh, that's just Ethan's face." But you know, Ethan, I like. I can't like if you if you get high and you watch Ethan and his face ticks that he does are just fucking. They start fucking with you after a little while. You're like. What the fuck it was? What the hell is that? His eyebrow just went to his head. Anyway. It was kind of funny. <laughs> uh, what's up with Tommy and C? Uh, nothing. It looks like Tommy's taking a break until the end of the year. Um, Joe, what's your favorite Halo campaign of all time? That's a great point. Uh, well, the first Halo game is my favorite. Absolutely. The first Halo game, my favorite campaign. First Halo. I get butterflies when I think about it, guys. I am a very nostalgic person. God, I get butterflies and I get excited thinking about um, when I first played Halo. That smell of the Xbox and the big controller in November 2001. And me and my friend Brad, who I... God, I haven't talked to him in five years now or six years. I wish I could find Brad. I don't know what happened to him, to be honest. He, did, he never liked social media. He never had a cell phone. Um, I don't even know what he's doing. Um, or where he is, which sucks because we were like best friends. Um, he was like very quiet, but, uh, we were, we were just, we were hyped up for Xbox for years before it launched when we knew that, uh, Bill Gates was doing something with Microsoft and a video game system. And, uh, my mother nicely enough went out and bought me the Xbox the day it came out or the night it came out or whatever it was. So she'd have it for Christmas for me. And like a scumbag, a 16-year-old uh, scumbag that I was, I went and found it in the closet the next day, and I stayed home from school, and I opened it up, and I smelled it, and the plastic, and the big controller, and the Halo game was there, and I popped it in, and um, I played Halo, and it was like, this fucking game is awesome. So uh, that was crazy, man. It was like, uh, it reminded me of like when I first played Doom on a PC back in 1992 or 1993 or 4, I forget, whatever when Doom was out, Doom or Doom 2 came out or whatever it was, I don't know, it was like 93, I don't fucking know, and just getting on the computer and playing Doom was like so, like, this is fucking awesome, you know, that's kind of what it felt like, uh, so I would say Halo 1, Combat Evolved is the best one, because I just love it, but Halo 3's campaign, I never liked Halo 2's campaign, obviously Halo 2 is like the, the game that did it. Like, everybody was online playing Halo 2. Like, that was the funnest time ever in Halo. Halo 2 was the fucking shit. But Halo 3's campaign, though, I thought was really good. The ending, the, that last map where you're driving on top of the world, that's fucking fun as hell. Uh, Peon Debe song is on Patreon. Yes, it is. 
I want to piss on you, baby. Joe, why are things from the 90s way better? I don't know. It's most, I think it's our nostalgia. Halo 2 is my favorite, like, time in Halo. Like, that was the time. Because Halo 2's online multiplayer, that was the first, that was the first game, really, that you could go online and play. That was it. That's what launched online gaming, really. Um, other games had problems with servers and, like, lag, and it was insane. You try to play a baseball game, the guy would throw a pitch, and then it would freeze, and then the ball would smack, like, all of a sudden appear, and it was fucked. Lots of games were fucked. But Halo 2, it was like, why, man, how is this playing so well? Like, Halo 2 played so well on the online. I mean, other than the modding and stuff that happened and the cheating that kind of did happen a little bit. Um, but for the most part, it was, like, clear and clean all the time. Yeah, there would be lag sometimes, but it was nothing like fucking any, all the other games at the time online were always fucking up. Um, so... Devious Dave, Dave, Dave Rose. What's up, Rose? Uh, you must have heard my uh, podcast from the other day. I don't know what her... You'd have to talk to her, Dave. I don't know. Uh, my head hurts too much thinking about the whole Trump thing. I don't know. I'm sick of defending um, everything. I don't know. I'll let you two fight about it if you like. That'd be kind of fun. Um... Oh, sorry, tweet. Yeah, 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 she said that. And then I was like, what? I don't know. Who knows? Whenever I argue with her, like, I hear all these things back that I'm like, okay. And then I and then if I argue with, like, a, a right-wing person, then they yell at me for all these things that I don't get. So I just fucking give up at this point. Fuck it. Um, uh, Till Death Do Us podcast, yeah, we'll be out soon. Leah has a headache and she's sick right now with a fever. So she's inside laying down. Otherwise, we would have recorded it. We were planned on recording it now. So instead, I'm going live talking to you guys. Um, but after I get my kid from school and I push my daughter on the swings and I get her Monopoly game that she needs for school or whatever it is, uh, not Monopoly, but a board game. After I do that, um, I'm going to hit up Dave Rose and see if we can record our thing today. We didn't do it yesterday either. I'm still talking about it. So hopefully that will be today. I think it will be. I got plenty of time today. It's, it's happening today. Um, Epstein, it's going to be at least 45 minutes to an hour, maybe a little bit longer than that. Uh, I'll hit up Dave and see if we can do it. And that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Turkey club t-shirt is available. The sweatshirt, the t-shirt, the stickers, the phone cases, tons of accessories on Teespring. Go check it out. If you ever wanted me to make t-shirts again, this is the t-shirt you need to buy to keep that going. Plus as for fun, you can also buy the Slob 75 t-shirt if you'd like to get that as well. So there you go. Um, I am going to push my daughter on the swings. Yeah, Eminem and Haley, Cronin and Brenna. That's funny, man. I love my... She's just the most beautiful thing. She brought me a card this morning while I was... Morning Madness is up on Patreon right now. I recorded that this morning. Morning Madness is up. 30 minutes long, I think, or something like that. Uh, when I was done it, she brought me a card, and she's like, I made you this, and it was all folded up, and I opened it up, and it's just this, like, a big heart, and I love you, and she's like, I, I just wanted to tell you I love you, and here's your card, and she gave me a hug, um, I just, it's just so adorable, I can't believe it, uh, but yeah, Turkey Club is on Teespring right now, your daughter is fake, <laughs> Steve says, what the fuck does that mean, um, yeah, Haley is, like, she, Haley's like Mick Foley's daughter, you seen her? Reminds me of Mick Foley's daughter a lot. It's kind of crazy. Um, yep. Uh, I'll be live tonight with Out of Nowhere at 11 p.m. I'll have some other stuff coming out throughout the day. Lots of stuff going on on Patreon today. So check out Patreon. And, of course, on Teespring right now, Joe Crone Show Teespring. Uh, tons of Turkey Club t-shirts, sweatshirts, everything. Turkey Club is running wild on a, on a Teespring. And you guys can get the t-shirt now. It just came out today. My new t-shirt turkey club go check it out um and what else is there to say that's it i will see you guys later sign up on patreon jim k's good call and i will be shouting out the 25 dollar producers uh tonight also so there's a lot of you guys thanks to everybody who became uh, uh members as well see you later
And thanks to the people that donated a couple bucks during the stream, too. Go buy the t-shirt! So I can make more of them! Ow! Dave Rose is a patient motherfucker!